Hey everybody, it's Kristana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today what we're going to do is go over a super cool finish. I like to think that this finish is kind of like a Southwestern, um, Arizona, maybe Spanish, Mexican, Italian, just colorful, cool boho finish. So this is the look that we're going to be going for right here. Okay. And as you can see, and I'll get a little bit closer in a second but it's got quite a few colors on it. We've got a transfer that's from Redesign that we've tied all the colors in. On the sides, it looks really cool like that. So I'm gonna go over how to do this with you on this side right here. So the first step to this is gonna be pulling out these drawers. I'm gonna pull out these drawers so that I can do the faces first, and then we'll work on the drawers. So the sides are super simple. It's just doing the spatula or doing the scraper on a flat surface. But the reason why I wanted to go over the front with you is because it's a little bit more complicated on the front. And so when we do the stuff right here on these flat surfaces, you'll just take that technique and put it on the sides. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to do it with all these areas that are a little bit more ornate. So this is a really fun finish and I hope you guys love it. Again, all the products that I use are in the description below. And, um, again, if you guys subscribe and hit the bell, you will get all the latest information and all the latest YouTube videos from me. So let's get all of our supplies and let's get started. So first I'm going to be giving you guys a list of supplies that we're going to be using. The transfer that's on this piece is called Western Tapestry and it's by Redesign. Okay. And that'll be down in the, the description for you. Again, you can do this finish with any colors that you want, but my finish that I was going for was more of a Southwestern boho colorful type finish. So, I um, am, you, you're gonna want your Dixie Belle Sea Spray, which is a texture additive, okay? You're gonna want, I'm gonna be doing three colors underneath this over color. So I have three cups and mixing spoons. These are just tongue depressors that I got on Amazon, super cheap, like a big box for a couple dollars. And then the three colors that I'm gonna be using underneath is gonna be Muscadine Wine. Okay, muscadine wine. I'm gonna be using kernel mustard and I'm gonna be using terracotta, which <laughs> is a little messed up. This is terracotta. And then the color that's over top of everything is mermaid tail, okay? And then you're gonna want a cheap chip brush for each color. So a cheap chip brush for each color. And then you I have a spatula, a putty knife, a spackle knife, whatever you want to call them for each color. If you don't have one for each color, you can do this in steps. So you could do one color, then clean it, then do the next color, clean it, then do the next color. But for me, it's just easier to work with the, a thing with each product. A tool for each color is how I like to work. So I've got three of these and they're fairly small, which will be perfect for this because this isn't a very big space. And then <clears throat> you're gonna want sandpaper and steel wool. And then at the very end to seal this all off, I like to use my Easy Peasy Spray Wax. This just is a little bit easier to seal it. You don't, when you're using Dixie Belle paints, you don't have to seal it, but I just like extra protection. Plus this gives it a matte finish, which is what I like for my boho finishes. And again, it just, it's extra protection. I've got a three and a seven year old at home and th somehow they managed to destroy, to destroy everything. Um, and so we've got that. And then also I replaced the hardware on here. So if you guys like this little hardware, this hardware right here is from D Lawless. And then the little knobs I'll be putting on there were things that I've collected over the years that I got from like Hobby Lobby years ago. So again, this is from D Lawless, this little hardware thing. It was like a lock and it had like a lock and key. Actually, the, the key's probably still in here. Um, so these were the hardware that were on it, but this isn't very boho. So I'm gonna take them off and save them for later. And then the inside of this had a lock. Whoop. The inside of this had a lock. And so I took that off and then let's see. Maybe the keys up here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so here's the key. So this used to have a lock and key type mechanism on it, but 
I, that's just not boho. So I'm totally transforming this, doing new hardware and just saving the other stuff for later for a different piece. So let's get started and we can transform this piece together. Okay, so the first part of this is going to be mixing your undercoat. And so we need our sea spray texture additive and we're gonna need one of our paint colors. We're gonna do this with all three of those paint colors. So the Colonel Mustard, Muscadine Wine, and the Terracotta, but I'm gonna show you how to mix one of them first. So you're gonna need your mixing cup. You're gonna need your mixing spoon, tongue depressor, and we're going to put just a scoop. So we're gonna put just a scoop of this into there, into the cup. And I'm gonna set this aside. Okay, so we're gonna do kernel mustard first. So I'm gonna make sure this is mixed. And we're gonna pour our paint into here. I'm not gonna do measurements. I'm just gonna show you what you need to look for as far as the texture. So we're gonna pour it into there and we're gonna mix it. And I can tell you right now that it's getting clumpy. That's not enough paint. So we're gonna add a little bit more paint. Just remember, if there's too much paint, you can add a little bit more sea spray. If there's not enough paint, then you can always add more. Getting a little bit more moisture in there. And I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more just because that's a little bit sticky. Just a tiny bit more. And what you can do since you need a chip brush for each color is you can pull your chip brush off and you can kind of just wipe it aside. Wipe it on there and set that chip brush aside. And we're just gonna mix it a little bit more. So you can hear So this is what we want. We don't want it chunky, but we don't want it liquidy. So it's kind of like a, like a thick pancake batter, thick muffin batter. So we're gonna do this with the rest of the colors and then we will move on to the next part. Okay, so do you guys remember how I said that we were going to pull the drawers out? So we're gonna pull the drawers out. We're gonna do the face of this first. And so we've mixed it our colors. We've got our muscadine wine. We've got our terracotta and we have our kernel mustard. You can take the mixing, um, the mixing sticks out and set them aside somewhere. I'm gonna take them out, set them aside somewhere. I just have my chip brushes inside of them just because it's easier to keep them there. So, like I said, I have three spatulas for each. And so I'm just gonna start with the first color. It doesn't matter what color you start with, but I'm gonna start with Colonel Mustard first. And you're gonna want a chunk on there. So I'm gonna start with Colonel Mustard first. Here's a chunk and we're just going to spread it on there, okay? Super easy, spread it on your piece in random places. Just want it in random spots, okay? No rhyme or reason, just wherever. And you can butt it up against, I mean, obviously you'd be doing the whole thing all together, but I'm just gonna butt it up against the pre-existing finish that we already did. Now, because this isn't completely flat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chip brush and like these have little indents right here, okay? So they have little indents. And so I'm going to dab it. I'm gonna kind of dab up here. If you want, if it's too thick or you want a little bit more, if you want it to be have more peaks, you can just kind of go like this, okay? But we're dabbing it so we get it all into that 
the crevices. So it doesn't matter if you want a little bit more or you want a lot bit more. Let's go down here to this part. So we did this area. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna put some on the legs. My little sticks. So we're gonna put a little bit on the legs right here. I like the way that the yellow pops through the mermaid tail, so I'm gonna put quite a bit of the yellow underneath here. Okay, I think I'm gonna put it right here because I like the way that yellow pops through. here a little bit okay so I'm going to continue to do this with the other colors and let's see the next color we can do is terracotta so we'll take our spatula and we're just going to wipe it across if you don't know where to put it you can just butt it right up against the other color so you can just butt it up right here it really doesn't matter at this point because this is the under part okay the undercoat and so we're just kind of buttoning it up against here. You can go over the other color. It doesn't matter. Let's put, put a little bit right here. I'm going to put some right there. Okay, so this is the frame of this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the drawers back in. And so I'm gonna put the drawers in, but we're gonna be very careful that we don't mess anything up. And when we put the drawers in, when it dries, we're gonna leave them out like this anyway, so it's not a big deal. So we're gonna start one drawer at a time. So we're gonna need our chip brush for this one. Um, the, pl the palette knife is not I mean, there are some flat spots, but this is gonna be the chip brush for this one. So we're gonna go random spots on this guy. And you can go over that, you can go over the um, transfer right there. It's not a big deal. So we're continuing to do the kernel mustard. And you can wipe it across to get it in there and then dab it. There's not really a wrong way to do it. And let's switch colors. Now we're going to do terracotta. Now we're going to move over to our muscadine wine put a little on top of that. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with e the other drawers. So I'm just gonna push that in just a little bit so that way it's out of my way and then I'm gonna work my way up to the next drawers. Okay, so the next part of this is to just let it dry. That's the hardest part of this whole process is to just walk away 
and let this texture and sea spray completely dry. And I'm talking like maybe a couple hours, maybe overnight, whatever, what have you. So this is the under part. You've got to trust the process. It kind of looks crazy like a calico cat. Um, but walk away from this and then come back when it's completely dry. All right guys, so we're back and this is completely dry. It's been probably about four hours or so. And so the next step is gonna be putting our mermaid tail over top of this. I'm just gonna do one coat of it because I don't care if it shows through a little bit because we're gonna have a distressed look. Okay, so I'm gonna put the mermaid tail on. I'm using my mini, or my Dixie Bell mini brush. And I'm just going to paint it across, butt it up against this transfer. And I'm gonna paint over all of this right now. tail on here and so now the next part is to take a flexible putty knife and I'm gonna go across the flat areas just gently like this to kind of pull back a little bit and distress it a little bit like we've got some distress right here so we're gonna just pull it back we're just gonna go across I'm gonna get a little bit closer so you can see and so we're just gonna go across like this So I'm also gonna pull this drawer out and go underneath the drawer and kind of go like this. You could pull the drawers out all the way if you want, but we're just gonna go like this and kind of expose a little of the wood, expose a little bit of that underneath. If you distress it a little bit too much, you can always take your brush and kind of just go back over it with the paint and then it fixes it. So if it pulls something back a little bit too much, like if you want to, you can fix it like that as well. So I'm gonna to continue to go across. Flat areas. You can see it's kind of pulling back the paint. see that it's on the back. So I'm going to continue to do that on the rest of the piece. And then once you're done doing that, the last step is to let it dry completely. And then we're going to take sandpaper and steel wool to it. So one of the very last parts of this is to distress it once it's dry. So you can take your sandpaper and you can distress it like this and that way it'll kind of show a little bit more. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see. But if you take your sandpaper and you start going like this, it'll show a little bit more of your finish that you're coming onto. And then you also take your steel wool and you go like this. And then you can also take your steel wool and go over areas that aren't as flat and just knock it down like that. And you can expose the color that way. And then also, so as you can see, we painted over this um, transfer. So I'm gonna take my steel wool and I'm just gonna rub it back. And that will help remove some of that paint that has gone down on that transfer a little bit. You can take it over here and kind of rub it across and it'll help get rid of some of that paint that went down on there and still give us that rustic look. So I'm gonna to continue to do that on the entire piece. And then after that is done, I'm gonna wipe it away and I'm just gonna spray my Easy Peasy Spray Wax on it just like so. So I'm gonna show you this side cause I already did it. So I'm just gonna take my Easy Peasy Spray Wax and spray it on there. And you can take a rag and you can wipe it in, but 
Um, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to use, this is my favorite sealer to use for textured pleases.